Hello YouTube, I'm coming at you from my garage, very dark. But uh, this is a installation video for a 2011 Mazda 3 head unit replacement or DVD or whatever you, you want to call it. But first things first, you gotta get that battery disconnected. You don't want any shorts or you know, I had a Jeep almost kill me one time with 24 volts. Probably didn't kill me, but it was scary. But all right, I'll come back with you with the tools and what you need to disconnect the battery. All right, guys, I'm back. Basically, all you're gonna need to remove your battery is a 10 millimeter wrench, or you could do a socket. Now, most of you aren't gonna have a battery anywhere close to this big, and you'll have a cover over it. So first off, you'll pinch the two sides and pull the cover off, and then I'm just gonna remove the positive end of the battery. So it's this bolt right there. That's the quickest way to remove the battery or the power to the car. Lefty loosey righty tighty. Have that battery off and we won't have to worry about anything shorting out or anything, you know, just safety first. There we go. Now I'm gonna want to set this to the side securely so nothing comes off. Alright, there we are. Time to get to the installation. Okay guys, the first thing you need to do to your radio after you remove it from your car is Basically, you see how it's got these different attachments on it for the slides and whatnot. That's all the extra hardware is for. See, nothing on here. First off, we're going to take these two screws off from the top, here and here, which it says, um, I believe it's for the DVD tray to keep it from sliding in and out. Or, I read something to do with the DVD. So, here's one screw. Here's the other. We'll set those to the side. Just definitely save them. Okay, guys, to install your hardware to mount the new DVD player in your car, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and the screws that were provided. So there's indicators on each piece to which side and the orientation it needs to go on. So just snug them up. You don't want to over tighten them, there's not going to be a lot of pressure on the radio. Um, I'd hope not, but, so there's four in this piece, speak this up, alright, the next piece is going to be the slide that I believe it has a stop right here to keep the radio from flying back, it has two little nipples right here that goes in these indent indent indentations, I haven't found a use for this um, L-shaped bracket yet. It's got a left marking on it. But um, if I do, I'll come back with the video. So turn it around and do it all again. Alright. So we used all the included screws. So I believe these are just extra hardware for now. Maybe uh, mounting brackets for something else. We'll come back to those. Uh, they're very important. Okay. What you're going to need to remove your 2011 Mazda 3 stock head unit or radio, uh, you're going to need a plastic prying tool made for uh, interior accessories. I don't have one of those, so I'm not going to show you my method of getting this out. Basically, I just used a very thin screwdriver to pry it out and pop it out. It's not the recommended way. You can um, really damage your plastic that way. Alright, also, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, and a flathead screwdriver also will help. First, you're just going to use your prying tools to get this up, and it's going to come straight out. It's got four little tabs that pull out, and then you can rotate it up. The emergency flashers are there, and we don't really need to remove it, so it will stay there and in put. We're going to use our Phillips head screwdriver to remove two screws. These are the only two structural screws that hold in the whole radio. Set those to the side, and the radio has four clips here, 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 and here. So we're gonna basically need to pull it straight back. It's gonna be a little tough, and it might not seem right, but you just gotta get those clips to pull out. I've already disconnected my wires to speed it up, but those are the clips I'm talking about right here. All right, so set your factory radio to the side, and let's get started on the new auto DVD. GPS radio. Okay guys, let's get started putting in the new radio. 
Basically, I got the first harness with the red uh, adapter with the black can bus decoder. All right, first we're gonna plug in the main plug. This is gonna be all, all your signal. Next, I'm gonna plug in this gray plug to this one right here. It also has a, a radio adapter, not a radio, an antenna adapter, but my factory radio didn't have one, so I, I don't believe there's an antenna anywhere for say on the car, so I'm just gonna leave this sitting in there. And I'm gonna put this back here. Okay guys, things might look a little bit different, but basically it's time to install the radio. And I've gone ahead and installed all the options pretty much for say, like the um, GPS, the microphone, USB cords. I did that because it's a uh, strictly preference. Um, it, you can have the GPS or microphone wherever you want. And I'll show you where I put mine later on, but it's just so many different options that there's no need to show. I've got all the center console out for the um, different accessories. That's very simple, and most people will know how to do that. All right, so we're going to come up here with our new radio. The only one I haven't ran is this uh, USB here. Um, definitely two USBs is great. You'll definitely be able to put flash drives or different accessories like that in them. All right, so I'm gonna, I've been dropping things through right behind the the air conditioner control. This is a regular, I think it's basically a sport package without the GT, so I don't have the fancy controls, but I don't really need all that. All right, so reach in here and pull it through. But we're gonna go ahead and plug in all our different things. There's plenty of them, so that's gonna take a minute. And we're going to slide it in. Oh, we got to plug in one thing. Where is video or camera? Plug in camera. All right, guys. I'm going to do a quick little test. I'm plugging my battery, and we're going to see how everything goes. Okay, guys. There's just going to be the first little turn on of this, and see how it goes. So it beats twice, the Mazda logo comes on. This is still with the screen protector up here, this is just testing it out. Alright, I got it tuned into a radio station. Sounds good. It definitely gets louder than usual. We don't want to do any uh, copyright, let's just move on to another station see. This dial doesn't twist all the way around like a factory dial. It it just kind of swings over. I can definitely tell more bass, and um, it seems a little bit clearer. I'm definitely happy, and now um, I'm basically, basically going to reinstall everything, make sure all my wires are tucked nice. So, first off, I'm going to turn the radio off. It stays on for a second. And then it turns off. It's got a little computer screen and an X. I believe this is powered by Windows or something like that. That's nice. Alright, so I'm just going to double check all my wires back here. Everything looks good. I got my video for my review camera that I'll be doing in a few days. Alright, so I'm going to snap it back in place. Hopefully. There's so many wires back here. you got to make sure everything's snug in there. Out of the way. Alright. So I'm going to reinstall my screws. That's set aside from the beginning. Once again, you want them snug but not overly tight. I believe this is plastic that we're screwing into. So.
Everything looks to be good. It looks like a very nice fit. A little bit, depending on what your angle is, you can kind of see through, but that could be because of my fitment of wires. Yes, this side's very snug, so I believe I'll readjust that. And, let's see. It's got a little bit of overhang, which is expected for a larger screen. Everything looks very nice. Let's um, put down the air vents and see how it matches up. Even though my car is very dirty right now. Let's see. These just snap right into place. Alright, so once they're snapped in, that's almost an exact color match if it's not exact. So, there you go. Installation of a 2011 Mazda 3 Auto DVD GPS. Let's see. Uh, I'll be coming back with a full um, review and basically how to work through the menus. Alright guys, this is just a little, uh, basically where I put my GPS and uh, microphone. So GPS is ran up under here, They're very dark, but it's ran under here to the radio. And then it comes out over here by the airbag pillar, I believe it's called the A pillar, and it runs all the way along. Which I'm, I don't have my GPS mounted yet simply because of the fact that I don't know what the orientation is. I don't want my car to be going backwards everywhere I go. The microphone comes up through. Um, basically all this is open underneath. So it comes around down through the little pouch right in there. And is, I have it mounted right here. I had issues with my stock Bose or stock Bluetooth microphone not being loud enough having to yell and turn basically like the air conditioner off and whatnot. So I've got it mounted right there so if I call you you'll be able to hear me. But it runs and it's placed right behind the new unit. Um, all my USB and iPhone cable or iPod cables are ran straight under to right here. Now you're probably thinking, why put two USBs in the same spot? Um, I'm basically going to have one come out of the cup holder and one come into the uh, center console. Maybe, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but um, maybe some large flash drive in each of them. You know, I don't have that big of a music library. But for you guys with like 16 to, I don't know, 40 gigabytes of music and movies also. I might do one for movies and one for music. But you guys with lots of music you'll have two slots open for that so that's really going to be great and um the unit looks good in here you can't really tell by camera like a video but the color match is very well um you see it it already smudges like <laughs> the factory but um i'll get everything cleaned up for the um full-on review and look for the review camera also um that's going to be ran to the back but Everything went in great. It was there's a lot of accessories, and that's the biggest thing, which that's that's a good thing. Um, but in the next day or so, you'll be seeing reviews and how tos on how to work the unit. The only two plugs I didn't use are um, auxiliary inputs, which can be, which are probably um, two cords would be audio. So um, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't, I'm not going to use that kind of features. So it's there if you need it, but. Um, definitely a good unit to consider. Probably one of the best for 2011 with the Mazda, the Mazda 3 with Bose. But um, I'll come back with some reviews and get back with y'all soon.